Hey guys, it's Peyton and today I'm going to be talking about the books that I read in February. I read five books which is pretty average and pretty decent for me and I only read one of them physically because this month was just chaotic with homework and that's just what had to happen. Everything else was an audiobook I believe because it was just the only way I could get my books in. One of them was a book for school and everything else was for my own reading pleasure. I read three thrillers, a class classic and a memoir. So I feel like that's a decent variety. Not really. Like literally it was mostly thrillers, but whatever. <laughs> I'm excited to get into it. I don't know about you. So the first book that I read this month was something that actually just came out in the US. If you watched my freaking reading vlog that I posted a few weeks ago, I read Good Girl Bad Blood by Holly Jackson. This is the UK edition and it is the sequel to A Good Girl's Guide to Murder and I recently did a whole book review on the first one of just me gushing about how much I loved the book and when I realized there was going to be a whole trilogy for it and that the sequel was already out in the UK I decided I needed to do that so yeah I vlogged my experience reading this spoiler free so you can enjoy that if you want but it just came out actually yesterday in America I literally just read it like a month early pretty much was it worth it I felt like it was because I just enjoyed my time so much this cover is obviously superior but this series is a thriller trilogy and I don't know if there's many of those out there but I really like the idea of it and Holly Jackson is just so smart with her freaking mysteries like she just has a plot twist every chapter I feel like and has really thought out approaches to these characters and all of the secrets they're keeping. This first one is about this girl named Pip. She is doing a senior project and her senior project is going to be on a murder investigation. There was a murder five years ago in her town. This girl named Andy Bell, like the most popular girl in her town, was murdered. The investigation ended up weeding out her boyfriend saying that the boyfriend killed her and then a few days after like the police were questioning him he committed suicide and the case has been wrapped up for years that's what happened in everybody's brains in this town pip has just been a little bit weirded out by this whole freaking situation for all of these five years because she just doesn't feel like it adds up completely so she's using her senior project to interview people and just come to a consensus on whether or not andy bell was really murdered by her boyfriend sal she actually ends up teaming up with this guy named Ravi who is Sal's little brother, the guy that everybody thinks murdered Andy. And they end up being a really good little detective duo. I just really enjoyed it because not only was the mystery a lot of fun and it ended up wowing me and shocking me and everything, but I also really like the characters and they do have a, like a little bit of a side plot romance. It's not the forefront of the book, but you do get like little splices and there's a lot of humor in the book actually. Like they have a lot of fun conversations throughout the dark shit that's going on. So I just feel like there's a nice balance between romance, humor, and dark and scary mysterious shit that goes on. I gave this one a five out of five stars. This one was a lot of fun because Pip has a true crime podcast in this book and someone in her town goes missing. So she's using her true crime podcast to update everybody on this person because the person's still missing and they could possibly be alive and she's pretty much using the whole town to like help her try to find this person. And I just really enjoyed the podcast aspect because the first book, it really was just Pip and Rafi. Like they were completely alone on this freaking murder investigation but this one it just felt like there was a community and like Pip is kind of famous in the town now because you know she solved mysteries in the past and everybody kind of knows about it and everybody's loving her podcast and I cannot wait for the third one it does come out both in the UK and America later this year and I'm so excited for it the next book I read was All Boys Aren't Blue by George M. Johnson now I didn't rate this one because it's a memoir and I just feel weird about rating memoirs and nonfiction books in general but especially memoirs because it's someone's life experiences and I don't want to like judge and rate how interesting their life experiences are, you know? I thought this was really great because this is showing George's background of being a queer black kid. Has a lot of good conversations on being queer and black and I just think it's a really important read and I've been wanting to read it for a while so when I finally got the audiobook, I got the hold from my library, I was so excited to read it. There's really not much I can tell you because you kind of just need to read the book to know his story and I feel like it's such an important perspective and a lot of people need to read this book. Actually, everybody needs to read this book, especially white people who really have no idea about these experiences, straight white people, especially because those people have no grasp on freaking anything. And 
and people need to educate themselves because they're so ignorant and just think everybody is fine and like, you know, everybody's life is so good. When you read stories like this, you realize there's a lot of things that black queer people have to face and it's just terrible but it's the truth and if people are more educated on it in general then it's easier to actually fight back against it because you have to acknowledge the problem before you can even do anything about the problem so i definitely recommend this to everyone i feel like his stories i don't know just the way he wrote them it was just really easy to read like it flowed really well and it just felt like you were hearing a story from a friend and he actually voiced the audiobook i really like listening to memoirs that the author actually reads because you know they have a whole different perspective on their book they wrote it they know how they want the sentences to come out and how they want them to sound the next book i read was sadie by courtney summers so i've heard a lot of great things about this one i listened to it on audiobook specifically because so many people have raved about the audiobook it has like multiple people doing the audiobook for different characters and there's a podcast element the general plot is that there's these two sisters one of them is Sadie and the other one I forgot the younger sister's name I think it's Maddie and we already know from the beginning of this book that Maddie was like murdered like a year ago or something and Sadie was pretty much the parent figure to Maddie their mom has been out of the picture for a while and you learn more and more about their history and just everything that's been happening to them throughout this book but we have two like sections of this book one is Sadie and her current timeline she has a mission that she's currently on and she's actually missing to the people that know her. She's not in town anymore. She went away for some mysterious reason. No one knows where she is and what she's doing. And then the other part of this book is this podcast. It's this man. He is doing this podcast called The Girls and it's all about Maddie and her unsolved murder and then Sadie and how she's missing. And he's desperately trying to find out where the heck Sadie is because, you know, people in the town that she's from is trying to find her and, like, he's- they're contacting this guy because he does a lot of things like this. There are two different timelines, though. You kind of see them connect, though, because we see people that Sadie meets and then we later see interviews of those people with the man doing the podcast. I do think this book was a little overhyped in my opinion. I ended up giving it a four stars though. Originally it was going to be like three stars but then the ending like really packed a punch. So it bumped it up to four stars but it really was one of those situations where everyone's been raving about this for so long and I just thought it was gonna be some crazy amazing shit. And while it was good, I just expected a little bit more but it definitely is still worth a read. I'm just now getting into thrillers and like mystery reason shit so this was definitely a fun one to listen to yeah the next book that i read was the one that i read for school it is jane eyre by charlotte bronte i have so many tabs in here because i had a whole color coding system for the tabs let's see i have orange tabs for character information just in case in my essays or shit that i have to write that i needed to know some info red is for patterns my teacher said to take note of any like objects or just anything that kept reappearing and then yellow is story connection so we were like comparing this book to fairy tales so anytime I saw like a connection to like Cinderella or Beauty and the Beast or something I would tab that and then blue was just for me it was like powerful lines because there ended up being a lot of good feminist lines and I had no idea this book was gonna be so good I gave it four stars I really wanted to give it five stars like I really enjoyed it but I'm like is this like a favorite book of all time I don't know it's definitely my favorite classic I've ever read I did read it for a class but it was definitely something I really enjoyed. I listened to the audiobook as well as like physically followed along so I could you know annotate. I took a lot of notes in this book. I underlined, I wrote in it, I highlighted. Like I did all types of shit to this book. I've already written like two essays on it. I have another one to freaking do. So I've had a lot of writing assignments on this book so far and I've actually enjoyed doing it because I feel like I have a good grasp on this book. I have actually like always wanted to read this book but I didn't really know much about what it was about. I did read Brightly Burning, which is like a Jane Eyre retelling in space. And now I really want to reread that book because I'm realizing I would have a greater appreciation for it now since I've read the source material. But this is pretty much about this girl named Jane. She's an orphan. She grows up with her like aunt and her cousins and they're just terrible. We kind of see her grow up and get past that situation and she's on her own and she ends up being a governess for this 
man and this little kid at Thornfield Hall. It's a kind of mysterious little mansion and some weird shit starts to happen. And she's also kind of falling in love with the man, Mr. Rochester, who lives at Thornfield Hall. While I really do not understand the hype around Mr. Thornfield, no, Mr. Rochester, excuse me. I do not think he's that great of a dude, but I genuinely feel like he was probably like the perfect man that women back in the day probably thought was like never gonna happen. Like I feel like he was just like this picture perfect man to maybe Charlotte Bronte because they never experienced a better freaking man and it was freaking published in 1847. So like that was a long time ago and I can imagine the standards being lower in a man and thinking Mr. Rochester is the man. Like he is the good man, the best man you could ever find. I have no understanding of what drew Jane to Mr. Rochester. He just like came off as like such a dick and she kept like talking about how ugly he is and that's like where the Beauty and the Beast like thing kind of comes in. How he's just plain freaking ugly and he's like a middle-aged man. Who cares? If he has a great personality, who freaking cares if he's ugly? Dude, his personality was poo. So I really don't understand the appeal about him at all. He was just this crusty middle-aged man who was weird and she was 19. But it was an old ass book. I really appreciated like all the feminism and shit because this was like ahead of its time for feminism, I feel. Like I was really impressed with so many of the powerful lines of just Jane being awesome. Honestly, the ending, I might have changed it though. I'm not gonna tell you what the ending is though if you ever freaking read it, but honestly, I would have had it gone a different way. Like her being a powerful bitch, just doing her shit, you know, all alone, doing whatever she needs to do, living her best life. But, you know, things things go the way they go. So the last book that I read this month was The Inheritance Games by Jennifer Lynn Barnes. This was just a random audiobook I picked up and I had so much fun with this book. I really wanted to give it a four stars, but I ended up giving it a 3.5. But this is one of those books that it was like a 3.5 and I don't own a copy of it, but I desperately want to own a copy of it because I literally had just so much fun. I listened to this in two days. It's like kind of a thriller situation, very similar to the premise of Knives Out. I love Knives Out and the whole concept of Knives Out is so much fun if you don't know anything about the situation. It's pretty much where a girl who has little to no money in this book, she's a teenager in high school, finds out that one of the richest families in the world, you know, the man, the old man that has the empire of the money, he dies and in his will, he leaves almost all of his money to her. And she didn't know him. She don't know shit about this guy. It's kind of like this mysterious thing of like, what was it about her that led him to give her the inheritance? And this man has four grandsons and like two daughters and like all these other people he could have given the money to and the four grandsons all live at this place called like Hawthorne House or something. It's this big mansion and if she wants to get the money that she inherited, she has to live at the mansion for a full year for whatever reason. All the people that should have gotten the money also live at the mansion and it's kind of scary because these people are kind of sketchy. Like they seem like they might kind of kill you because you stole their inheritance but she has no idea how this even happened but obviously if you get in this situation, you're not gonna pass it up. Like, you're gonna live in this house for a year and get your money. Who's passing that shit up? I do not know. And I think the concept is just so much fun because, like, money doesn't solve everything, guys. Like, emotionally. But there's so many things, like, it really can help you with. And I know it's not, like, the end-all be-all. Like, your life is gonna be so happy. But, bitch, I hate that argument acting like it does nothing. Because there's so many problems in life that people face that have to do with freaking money. And you can make those situations better. I don't know. The concept is just so freaking fun because it's just like you won the lottery and like everybody would love that. It'd just be so nice to like not have to worry about money and like be able to do anything you freaking want to do. Think about how powerful that would feel. Avery, the main character, is dealing with this situation and she's with these four grandsons and they're all kind of figuring out this mystery because they feel like this old man, the freaking granddad that left all the money, has concocted a a crazy riddle for them all to figure out because the grandsons are saying like 
this is something he always did. He was like a lover of riddles and all these weird mysteries. He left all these clues for them to come together and figure out. Honestly, if the crazy mystery ended up being a better mystery, it probably could have been a four or five stars. It ended up being disappointing in that department, but I could not deny how fun it was to read. And there is going to be a sequel that I think comes out later this year. So I'm excited for that. There's still a little bit more of a mystery left that we can explore. But yeah, I am kind of disappointed with how like lackluster it ended up being. Like it was pretty obvious. I don't know. I felt like I figured it out. It wasn't mind boggling or anything. But I do feel like all of the characters like really are memorable. Like they had four grandsons and I feel like all of them were pretty distinct. Like they had different personalities and I'm intrigued by all of them. There's a little bit of a love triangle happening with the main character and two of the sons. And honestly, I'm here for it. Like it's so much fun doing love triangles sometimes. Like it's classic YA shit and sometimes I just want that. So those are the five books that I read in February. Let me know if you've read any of these before. If you want to read them, let me know any of your thoughts on them. If you loved them, hated them, tell me down below. Like this video, comment down below. Have a good day. Please subscribe. Make sure to follow all my social medias, which I'll link down below, and go click the bell button, which is right by the subscribe button, which you should already clicked, and goodbye.